Welcome to today's daily video devotional. My name is Brent and I am so glad that you're joining me today. Have you ever experienced something extremely powerful and it changed the way you handled it? I have. It was in a gun shop in Detroit and it's actually going to speak a lot to the power of our words. How? Why? Stay with me. I'm going to tell you all about it. It's a great day to be alive. Thanks so much for staying with me. So, gun shop in Detroit, the power of words. How does this all click? All right, well, me and my buddies in my early 20s decided to go over to Detroit to a shooting range over there. So we go over, we go to the building, and on our way inside, we hear this ping, 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 and we realize that the wall we're walking in front of outside is actually the wall everyone's shooting at. And that was a little bit of a moment of what am I getting myself into? But then we walk into the store and it is every gun you can possibly imagine and ones I couldn't even imagine. And so we're looking and we're thinking about which one we want to pick up and go to the range with. And we're looking at the ones we've seen on TV and the owner comes over and goes, okay, have you ever shot a gun before? And I said, well, no, not a real gun. Okay, so me and my other buddy tells us, before you use anything else, I want you to start with a revolver so you can get a feel for it first, and then I'll let you rent something else. Okay, so we get it, we get all our stuff, we go through the safety, we check off the boxes, and we go into the shooting range. Put on the earmuffs, put on the goggles, and the first time I pulled that trigger was an incredibly sobering moment. I had used cap guns, paintball guns, all that stuff, but the power that was behind that was just this really like, stop, okay, this is intense. Well, how does that connect to the power of our words? We're going to jump right into scripture today. We're going to talk about it and we're going to get some more clarity on it. So today's scripture, we're going to go right now to Proverbs 13, verse 3, the Passion Translation. Guard your words and you'll guard your life. But if you don't control your tongue, it will ruin everything. Matthew 12, verses 34 to 37 in the Passion Translation says this. But you who are known as the Pharisees are rotten to the core. You've been poisoned by the nature of a venomous snake. How can your words be good and trustworthy if you are rotten within? For what has been stored up in your hearts will be heard in the overflow of your words. When virtue is stored within... The hearts of good and upright people will produce good fruit. But when evil is hidden within, those who are evil will produce evil fruit. You can be sure of this. When the day of judgment comes, everyone will be held accountable for every careless word he has spoken. Your very words will be used as evidence against you, and your words will declare you either innocent or guilty. I like how the message translation says that last part. Let me read it to you. Words are powerful. Take them seriously. Words can be your salvation. Words can also be your damnation. Those two passages speak to the incredible, unbelievable power of words. We've all been on the receiving end of something extremely hurtful being said to us, words that have discouraged us. Maybe you even have words that have stunted your life, that have held you back, that you've been trapped by. There is real power in what we say. But this passage, Jesus is speaking and makes a very bold statement that we are going to be accountable one day for every careless word we said. I don't know about you, but I forget the severity of that passage a lot. I like to talk and it's easy to just keep going. But man, Jesus is saying, hold up a minute. There is going to be accountability for what you say. That passage we first read talks about how just foolish words can ruin everything. Words are powerful. Take them seriously. Words can be your salvation. Words can also be your damnation. Man, how much more do we need to pay attention to our words? Now, when I was in Detroit... I didn't need to have that gun on somebody to know the power of it when I fired it. It was a little paper target at the end of the shooting gallery. And with our words, we actually shouldn't need someone to be on the receiving end of hurtful words to realize the destructive power of it. 
I'm sure you've been there. You've said something you wish you could get back, but you can't. You've hurt someone with words. Today, let's change it. Let's think about what we're going to say before we say it. Let's pause and actually reflect on the power of our words. They actually can bring life. There's this other passage of scripture I really want to read for you right now. And it's this, Proverbs 18, 21 in the Message Translation. Words kill. Words give life. They're either poison or fruit. You choose. We get to choose what our words will be. Will they be poison or fruit? Will they give life or will they tear down life? I don't know about you, but I want to give life away with my words, so I've got to start thinking about the words I'm going to use. This week, we're going to dive even more into this topic. It's going to be a great week, but today, here's the action step I want you to take. If you have hurt somebody with your words and you need to make that right with them, right now, whatever means you need to connect with them, go and connect with them and do your best to make it right. Whether they receive it or not, that part isn't on you, but your part is to go and make it right. And for the rest of us, let's write down some of this scripture today and post it up somewhere where we're going to continue to see it. Write down Proverbs 18, 21 in the message translation. Words kill, words give life. They're either poison or fruit, you choose. Put that up somewhere where you're gonna see it today and the rest of the week and month. And let's remember, we have an incredible opportunity to build up with what we say but we have an incredible responsibility to also watch it so we don't tear others down. Now, if you're watching right now, the most important words you could ever utter are to begin a relationship with Jesus and to worship him with your life. So if you are ready to make that decision right now, I'd love to invite you into that, to say, Jesus, you're going to take the lead in my life. I'm going to pray. You can just repeat after me. Believe these words in your heart. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me, for dying on a cross and rising again, to forgive me of my sins, but also to transform my life. I'm choosing now to put you in charge. You take the lead. And I'm going to learn to love you, and I'm going to learn to trust you, but I'm really going to need your help. So help me with it, Lord. And thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, I also pray for my friends who are watching this that just struggle with their words. They struggle with the things to say and how they've been destructive with it or even not sure sometimes how to navigate difficult situations. I pray by the power of your Holy Spirit right now that you would give us wisdom and clarity on when to speak and what to speak, that we would speak life and build others up and not tear them down. I thank you that you're going to do this and you love to do it because you love us. In Jesus' name, amen. If you or someone you know would like or even need prayer, please email us, pray at the pc.ca. And if you just decided to give your life to Jesus and let him take the lead, also email us, pray at the pc.ca. That's amazing, and we want to help you on this new journey. So email us. And lastly, before we go, I need you to know we love you, we appreciate you, and I'll see you tomorrow.